one shot at a time. Welcome back to the Enjoy the Walk podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, we're back from the weekend. We had a long one. I wasn't golfing, uh, but Dante was, and uh, I think Isaiah was as well. He, uh, we're happy to announce for Isaiah that uh, he's accepted a new position as a uh, assistant teaching pro. So uh, he's actually moving into his apartment as he speaks. So he can't uh, he can't join us this evening for the uh, for the talk to join you guys, but. Uh, yeah, welcome back, guys. Happy Tuesday. And uh, Dante, what did you get into this past weekend, man? Did you get some golfing? I did. Uh, of course, I chose to play on the day that was the coldest of the week, which sucked at the same time because it was windy. But, you know, I finally, I finally managed to uh, find the right amount of clothing to keep me warm because up here in the Northeast – I'll tell you what, in our area, if there's no snow in the ground, I'm telling you what, you'll see probably 25 to 30 of our members playing because that's how diehard golfers they are at my club. Oh, 100%. And, uh, I agree. No, no snow on the ground, we're out there playing. I mean, I've, I've played on frozen turf before, but luckily luckily, I was uh, I was pretty pleased with the, with Saturday. The wind could was a bit annoying, but I managed. Um I almost lost my seat in the on the pop, on this podcast as I almost decided to ride in a cart because my buddy had the wind protector and the and the uh, propane heater. Now I think we can cut I you some slack. I think we can cut you some slack because, and it's the only reason I'm ever going to say this. I think when it's below forty degrees, I think you have I think you have some clearance. I think our okay. listeners are okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I sat. I I won't lie. Uh, I won't lie here. I did ride in the cart for the first hole, and I was uh, I was feeling a little under the weather, so I didn't know what was going on with the with the changes in the temperature because the previous week was sixty degrees, and now it's almost freezing. And then now today was about fifty degrees. Yeah, but, today was beautiful you know, my, down here. I mean, on my drive uh, home, it was it was freaking gorgeous. I wish I could. I know. Have we, today. I know. I, I I always choose the the wrong days to play. <laughs> now you but, said you found yeah. your uh, you found your go to kind of combo to keep yourself warm and stay mobile. I'm always trying to figure that out. I feel like I've been playing golf forever and trying to figure out that like precise combo, and I'm always tinkering with it. Um, mine's usually just like an Under Armour with a uh, with a long sleeve polo. And just a nice like middle middle weight quarter zip over that. I feel like I'm pretty warm no matter where I go with that combo. Um, and sometimes if I have to, when the wind's really going and it's cold, I'll throw some of like my snowboarding uh, pants on, like my long johns, the like the spandex warm pants underneath a good pair of golf pants, and that usually does the trick all the way down to like freezing. And then below freezing, I'm usually not playing. So that usually that usually gets me by. But what's your go to combo that you found this weekend? So this weekend, and I truly tested out because luckily this this winter has been pretty mild, so we've been getting pretty decent decent temperatures to actually play play golf. But I was able to test it because I guess the feel was in almost in the low 30s, maybe in 20s at the beginning. So what I do is I'm a big mobility guy because if the problem with winter golf, a lot of people they struggle with is they don't feel as they get the proper swing or they are taking like half swings and because they just can't move because they have so many layers on. <laughs> but to me, to me, I'm all about keeping the torso warm. Uh, the arms can, you know, give or take. But what I do is I'll take an under armor and I'll cut it to short sleeves, like right before the elbow. And then I found at Marshall's, it was this Reebok thing that had seemed like it was almost for hockey, but it was loose, but it wasn't tight. It was a quarter zip and it had kind of like the North face material on it. I a cut fuzzy, that little fuzziness, not too much, but yeah, a little, a little fuzz, little, yeah. little fuzziness. So you got some warmth that's tight to your body. And then you got that that's kind of tight. But what I did, I cut that into, I cut the whole sleeve off. So it was like almost like a tank sleeveless. It was sleeveless. So you throw that on top and then I have this North face fuzzy material as well. 
Uh, so I did that. And then I have this like Sherpa vest. So I throw that on. So my arms are actually loose and I feel like it turn. It's a little compacted on the chest, but it doesn't really affect the swing. So I go with that with my torso. And then I have, um, I have golf pants that have like the infrared kind of, uh, cool weather it's almost like a uh, no free ads but i've never heard of that Where, who makes those it's it's under armor under ah, armor they make gotcha. their yeah it's the under armor golf pants and they have the extreme weather or weather conditions whatever the heck you want to call it uh it kind of has this slight felt throughout the throughout the inner lining um and it and they're actually water resistant too which i've noticed from playing too so that's pretty hmm. sweet you don't have to worry about you know when things start thawing out and you know, it starts to get a little, little wet. Um, so I go with that, and then I rock a, obviously a winter hat, and then I rock a. Um, yeah, you got to keep that ball like head cold. Like skis or warm. socks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. I know. I, I, I figured that out. You should see me coming off when I'm real sweating. Steam's rising out. Once I was gonna I say you get the, the good off. steam rolling off for all of our bald headed <laughs> listeners out there. I, I love oh, seeing it. And it even happens from my perspective, but it's just funny to see from a bald headed dude that's just like he, he, you know whether he's happy or not in a cold weather situation, if he's been walking around really putting some exertion out there, there's always a steam rolling off. It's always fantastic. To see. It's it's uh it's real life Looney Tunes when the guy gets hot and you see the steam coming off of his head. Yeah, hopefully it's not because i'll tell you what mm, usually it is but, <laughs> uh, we'll leave it at that <laughs> no but yeah I, I figured that out so like the only two things that really pissed me off are well i mean it really can't piss me off but i dislike when it comes to winter golf is when the turf is frozen because you're not really playing golf when the ball's bouncing 50 yards off the green and you're just hitting it in the concrete and then wind um so it was windy at times, but it managed. But somehow, after the first hole, it was frozen on the first hole. But after that, somehow it thawed out, and the ball was – it was like playing normal golf. And just – I right after the first hole, I was in the car with my buddy, and I said, I can't do this. It's like I can't they, – they wanted me to have a, a towel that said enjoy the ride instead of enjoy the walk. Yeah, I was like, I was were, about to have to post on, set. you know, Craigslist, Indeed, whatever may have it that uh, we were looking for a third member of a podcast crew because I, I don't know. Like I said, the temperature might have given you a, a free pass this time around. So I'm going to let you ride on that. But uh, hey, yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. you see me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's always fun to get out at this time of the year, man. It's such a blessing. And well, now we're in March, but end of February, beginning of March in the Northeast to get around a golf in outside. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. And it's, it's something we all can take advantage of if we have the opportunity. And another thing, man, you got this, you got this scare, you got this coronavirus going around. People are freaking out. And I was, I was a little nervous too, because I was feeling a little under weather and the media, man, they hype a lot of things up. So the I don't know you get what's, that scratchy what's throat, true man. and what's it's not. Like, oof. Oh, I, I went, I went full panic mode. I'm like, Oh shit. So next thing I know, I was like, you know what? I, I'm, I gotta go out and play just to, just to get out there and just exercise, just to walk and just get the fresh air. I feel like I the mean, fresh air to, is just I the number to one remedy to everything, man. I, oh, uh, I was not oh, golfing great. this weekend. I was, I was up at a country concert, uh, a little bit, you know, you're, and, uh, you're up in my kind of neck of the woods. I was out there, man. And, yeah. uh, p- packing that many people into a, uh, a dome sort of to speak um when you have this coronavirus there was actually lots of people wearing masks and stuff um the scare, the scare is real i feel like uh now in the u.s with you know the whole all the media saying man we're gonna pump this up is like it being coming to the u.s with all kinds of fright and fear and all kinds of death rates or whatever and i'm just like I feel healthy enough, so I I didn't do the whole mask thing. I think that's a little over overkill, but maybe not. I don't know. We'll see how I feel here in the next couple of days. But yeah, I was at a country concert. Uh, Russell Dickerson, Chris Lane, Kane Brown. Uh, so it was a fun time. It was a good. Uh, Atlantic City, right? Yeah, man. It was. Uh, it was fun gamble? to be out there. I think I gambled zero cents, and I'm very happy about it because if I do gamble, it's usually a loss. So. I went. At, I went in there, got out of there, stayed even keeled. The only thing you I just got to do my strategy. Food, I ate. I ate hundred bucks this week. 
Eight like a kid. 100 bucks on roulette. You lose it in two seconds and you bounce. That's my strategy. Damn, I'm a blackjack guy. <laughs> I'm 100% a blackjack guy. I'll okay. make that if I, especially right. if I find a five or ten dollar table, I'll make that hundred dollars last like three hours on a blackjack table, man. See, I try, I try and go, go big or go home. Uh, I mean, I'm so it's funny, you know, where I'm at. I'm about maybe 45 minutes to about 50, 55 minutes to to Atlantic City. So a couple of buddies of mine sometimes. I remember he just texted me. He goes, "Yeah, you want to go to the Borgata?" It's like, uh, sure. Picked me up around eight o'clock at night, head down there, there for maybe about an hour, hour and a half gambling, spent our money real quick, came home. It was sick. <laughs> we do that all the time. So me, luckily for me, I had the convenience to go down there. I know a lot of people, you know, they, it, it's more, it's more time. So they want to spend and utilize their time, but shit, man, I go down there. I throw down a hundred bucks on the roulette table, throw some big, I'll throw, usually I'll throw a 20, I'll, throw, I'll split it up in $25 and play four spins and then throw, I'll throw just a $25 chip on a random number on the inside and it's 35 to one odd. So if she hits, see if, if she goes. Hit, yeah. If not, just I'm out, go home. <laughs> see, now People I'm, think I'm, I'm stupid, com- but. I'm completely a degenerate gambler on the golf course. You catch me on the oh. golf course and I'll be pressing. I'll be asking for birdies, <laughs> sandies, greenies, you name it. I, like, let's put it all on the table. Uh, so now I, I, I get my gamble fix on the golf course usually. And, uh, and other than that, like I said, I'll play a good blackjack game every now and then. But uh, yeah, I, I got in and got out of Atlantic City without spending any money uh, on the gambling side of things, which is shocking yet refreshing for a change. It's so. just, sometimes it's actually like a good, good rewarding thing. Cause you don't want to walk out and be like, where'd all my money go? I've, and then, I've almost cried walking out of um, casinos before. Um, not because I've lost a ton. I've never taken like an enormous hit, but I've been up a lot and then lost it all back to even. And that almost feels worse than losing a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like I have enough chips. I've been at the blackjack table before where I've had like, I've started to put them in my like breast pocket of my like, you know, my coat. I'm like, all right, I'm up a hundred. I'm up two. I'm up three. I've been up to the point where I've been up like $1,800 and like the drinks start flowing. So you start feeling more confident and you're good. So you're like, all right, instead of like just betting like 25 a hand, I'm going to bet a hundred a hand. And like 18 hands later, you're down to zero again. And you're like, what the hell just happened? So Yeah. It, it hurts a little more when, when you think you're going home with a fresh wad of cash and then all of a sudden uh, it's gone. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you what. If you start thinking that you're going to win when you're up that much, it's time to, it's time to cash out and leave. Or if you play, for me, you got to have that self-discipline. Man, I wish I had that like on the golf course or other, other – uh, avenues of life but i'd love we'll to see there. i'd love uh, to see how and i think some people have like kind of went down this avenue before but i'd love to see how the biggest like you know how kobe how michael jordan how tiger like how how they would gamble because it's like they're the greatest minds in like their sport and i know they're intelligent enough to like be smart gamblers or like be good gamblers at least so i'd love to Vermont, see that mentality on it speaking of well MJ i know mj gambles other load of money <laughs> but i know if you want to gamble gamble on something that you can possibly control like if you're going to throw down money on a golf course you can somehow have control with your game whether oh amen you, you know i mean when you're throwing it up against odds and you're playing against a casino who's try who's going to take money off of you yeah yeah that's tough if but i got I, 10 yeah, grand i can see how some of those guys if I got 10 What's grand that? and they're going to tell me you get the choice on how you're going to gamble it, not like, oh, you have 10 grand on the blackjack or you have 10 grand on roulette or seven card, you know, poker, or whatever. If they're like, just here's 10 grand, win it however you'd like or gamble it however you'd like, I'm taking the sticks at a golf course, man. I'm having complete control yeah. over it. Yeah, so, for sure. Just me. I agree with you on that one. Oh. Man. So, yeah now fun weekend uh, man sounds it was, like you had it was a good fun. time though it was fun off the golf course for a change um and i feel like you know as, as the as the spring starts to go here and we have a couple more weeks to daylight uh savings time and we start getting next those, week 
is it next week already? Oh, oh my goodness, yeah. we're coming. Man. So, spring spring I'm, is coming. I'm fired up. I'm fired up because I know when I get when out start, of work. Yep. Ah, oh, you can. I can. I still have time where I can drive down to to my course, hit the range for a good hour, maybe hour and a half, and then the sun starts going down. That's the best. best That's when you know seasons up is best. pretty it's much just, almost in full swing. Yep. When you know uh, the, the, the summer is almost upon you, the light is there well past when you get out of work and you can go get a nine or hit a large bucket or what, what, what you have it. And I just, I can't wait for like the warm weather too. We got a glimpse of it a couple times over the winter, but like a consistent, like 65, maybe 70. The minute it starts hitting 70 during the day is like a peak. It's just perfect weather. I love the springtime for that exact reason. Um, so no, I'm pumped for that time coming around men's league, start coming around, you know, in the spring after work, you know, it's just a good time for golf and we're almost there. We are so close, <laughs> you know, th this winter has been milder than most and I don't want to, you know, I'm going to knock on wood because, um, I know. We're, we're not quite out of it yet. We've had snow in March in the Northeast and I just am crossing my fingers. I'm like, come on, let's just pull through it. Give me some golf weather the next couple of weeks. And then you get to I, April I, and, and then smooth sailing. I think you just have to get past the first week of April and you're solid, especially in my area because March is a fickle bitch and she <laughs> doesn't want to figure out whether it's still winter or we're going to push in the spring because there's that one week always. And this is why people hate March the most because they're, you know, you're getting that peak of spring and you're like, Oh, cool. Warm weather, warm weather, warm weather. And then next thing you know, there's this week and you just get dumped with a foot of snow. And then you're, you're like, wow. And then the weekend comes and it's 50, 60 degrees. But, but the snow snow's the <laughs> there because it's melting. And you're just like, wow, that's just a wasted weekend. I mean, we're right there uh, on get a me, golf standpoint. Get I mean, me, obviously, there's get me to Masters weekend. Things, but. Get me to Jim Nance talking us through Augusta National. And then it's golf season. For and sure. then it's golf season, and then we're good to go. We're in the swing. But we're something in. I do want to talk about, uh, we released some new merch. Yes, and we did. coming up is the players in two weeks. We've got I, the Walkers. I'm looking at it. The Walkers, quicker than most. For those of you watching on YouTube, for those of you who tuned in on iTunes or Spotify, go check out our store. Uh, we, we're trying to be as fun as possible with uh, creating some exclusive Walkers-only merch. Um, that, you know, kind of fit in with, uh, with all of our fan base, those guys who love to get out there and walk, whether you're a caddy, whether you love carrying your clubs, however it may be. Um, so, yeah, check out our merch, www.enjoythewalk.store, uh, at enjoythewalkpod on Instagram and Twitter. And, uh, and, a, and a shout out to those guys who, uh, who are starting to, you know, ditch the cart and start walking. I see we have some guys posting on there that they walk maybe twice in a row this time. Yeah, I mean, we've uh, – one of our most recent pickups on the bag tour, uh, Brian Vernon, shout out to you, buddy, at BV Golf on Instagram, uh, continuously sending us some, uh, some photos of him lugging around the, the cart bag. I mean – God forbid, buddy, at least get a, get a walking bag in there and save yourself some, uh, some, some back troubles later in life. But it's awesome <laughs> to see, it's awesome to see people, you know, picking it up and, and say, man, you know, I never really walked before, but, uh, but you guys are, uh, I love the mentality you guys have around the game. And I love seeing all of your, like, you know, people you're interacting with, uh, get out there and walk. And it's actually really cool. I walked nine holes tonight, you know, and, and, uh, the cool part for me too was he's like oh is this cardio or is or is this golf and I'm like it's both man that's the fun of it like that's why I love walking golf too like I, I can get a little bit of exercise out of it to where like usually when I walk 18 carrying my bag I'm beat by the end of the day but it's like a great feeling because I know I just I was healthy during the day I got you know a little bit of cardio in I was able to help myself physically I'm, but then also enjoy the round a couple, a couple things actually. When you walk, you're walking roughly. It's an average of about five miles for a walk, and it's the same average cardio if you were to run a two and a half mile. So, I mean, you're getting, you're logging in some steps too, and that's a, that's a lot of cardio that you put in. And those who do 36, <laughs> or you know, they 36 in one day, or they do 36 on the weekend. I mean, you're in those two those two days, you're you're logging. 
you're logging some steps and you're definitely getting some your heart rate up. Now I and do want to say it's not even just a it's not even a straight walk. It's uh, I mean you you're still putting an aggressive swing. Well, that too. Club. And most places, and down, like, right? I mean, most places aren't like down here on the Eastern shore, they have some elevation. So you're, you're getting some, you're getting some grinding going up some hills, down some hills, you know, um, even downhills a little tougher on the legs. So yeah, you're getting a grinding out there while you're walking. So it's, it's beneficial for not just your golf game, not just hanging out with your buddies. And, and it's, it's beneficial for the physical side too. Now, the one thing I do want to mention he brought up, and I think is an awesome topic because a lot of our fans out there have kind of mention this or at least we've had a conversation about it. he's like man where do i put my beers put them in a bag buddy lug them along you can set a beer can down on the grass it ain't gonna hurt you and just drink Nothing it a little quicker is- if it's a little heavy in the bag drink it a little quicker pretty easy nope. scenario there <laughs> Nothing beats you walk. You got the bag strapped to your one shoulder. You're walking with your buds, and you're just carrying that to that mixed drink or beer beer can in your hand. It's a it's a, it's a good feeling. It's shout a good, out, good shout to out to probably the one of the best nine holes like time wise that I had other than Winter Park down with Machinella. Two weekends ago, uh, my buddy and I, Steve DiCarlo, shout out to Steve. He works down here at Rum Point in. Uh, on the Eastern shore of Maryland near Assateague. Um, we went up to Nutter's crossing local, like town course, pretty much late evening. Uh, we, we got a quick nine in, took a couple Bud Light seltzers out with us. Shout out Bud Light. Um, got, gave them a try for the first time. Shockingly delicious. How, yeah. I was about to say, are they good? Shockingly delicious. I will most certainly be buying some more of those. Um, how would you compare them to the other uh, seltzers? All right. So white claw is like lighter. I'll, I'll, I still give White Claw like a s- distinct advantage. Like when it when Are you we... drink it and when you like just the, the flavor, it's like not as like, I feel like all the other seltzers have like a stronger flavor. White Claw has that like subtle flavor. It goes down light. It's like a true seltzer. But okay, Bud Light is close, man. They have some great flavors. It goes down really well. Caught a slight good buzz off of just like three or four. So also are, very tasty. Strong. Yeah. And uh, okay. just made for a great walk. And we, so we, we took like three or four of those out of piece, walked nine holes, clinked some Bud Lights along the way. And it was just fun, man, because we walked. We probably walked the calories off of those Bud Lights that we drank the time we were out there. But um, it just made for a fun time. And we just threw four, three or four in our bag. If you walk around nine holes with like five or six balls, on a course that you're not going to lose a lot, you know, and a couple seltzers, you're never going to know the difference of putting a couple beers or a couple seltzers in your bag and carrying them. You're never going to know the difference. So it's not like you're lugging around like a 30 rack and it's like weighing you down. It's a fun time. I highly recommend it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if you crack more than a few on the round, you take a little out for the first nine, you hit the halfway house of the bar, grab re, That's it. re up hit back and then you're you're back in the 19th hole cracking open some more hey it's I mean, a perfect excuse and to you can develop st- a relationship with the cart girl that's all i'm saying too and you, you gotta refill still throw it still throw it on your back and one foot in front of the other pretty easy mentality <laughs> but I'll, guys i'll tell you i'll tell you this though go go off of that about the walking and the after work thing i know at my course you know which i which i love is you want to go get play a quick nine holes or, you know, after work, you, you know, Hey, I'm going to go play, play some holes or whatever as a course. I don't know about you, but some of the courses I play, you know, they want the carts in at a certain time at yep. the night by the sun comes down. If you're strapping it on your back and you're walking, they just leave you. They I don't mean, <laughs> care. Exact scenario we ran into. Uh, it was late Saturday evening, I believe. Uh, we had moved my buddy into his uh, apartment, and we were like, man, we could squeeze a quick nine in. So we get there, and you know, we're like, yeah, we're going to go out and play nine. And the guy's like, uh, you're probably only going to get five holes in. We're like, no, we're walking. He's like, well, you're probably only going to get five holes in. He, like, he couldn't understand the concept of we were all walking. He thought he was going to have to give us a cart. And he's like, well, I'm, I'm leaving at seven or I'm, I mean, I'm leaving at five. Go right ahead. Yeah. And we're like, sure. All right, we're walking. He's like, Oh, Oh. And he finally like understood. And it's like, that's the thing everywhere is like those carts need to be in because they need to get them clean. They need to get the doors locked up, just, you know, computer shut down, whatever. And I would say 99% of places will let you just walk until you can't see anymore. Cause they don't care about you. And, and- 
And I understand the golf operations. I mean, they're there, they're there literally from sun up to sun down. And even before they get everything prepped. So they want to go home. I get that. I don't want to be that guy who's the last card out there. I've done it a couple of times. Uh, I'll be honest. Uh, but I don't like it because I, and I, one thing I do hate is if I'm taking a cart and, you know, I'm fighting, I'm, you know, chasing the sun, as they say, mm-hmm. I, I'm basically in the back of my mind, I'm, I'm constantly checking my phone or checking, checking my watch to see what the time is. And I'm not just out there enjoying the moment, enjoying the round that I'm playing. When I go out there and walk, I can, I can care less about the car bike guys. They are getting their carts in. They do what they got to do. Yep. I'm going to take my time and play until I can't see and then go home. It's the best man. And the, you know, the other mentality that I, I always preach and I think we love to preach is like, guys, it's just cheaper. Like if you're in for saving a buck and like, if you play a lot, over the course of a summer, you're probably saving, I know for 18, you can walk, I think for like $25 at most courses, give or take, you know, if, ands, or buts, but the riding is like 45, 55. So there's $20 times 30 rounds a year. You're looking at like $600 over a summer. There's a new set of irons or half a new set of irons, or whatever. I don't know. Walking's, walking's efficient. Walking's uh, economical. And uh, it's just fun, guys, especially if you can get all your buddies into it, too. If you can get a whole group that enjoys the walk, you know, it's just uh, I think it makes for a better time. I feel like you're more connected when you're walking with the whole group, you know, as opposed to two guys getting in one cart and two guys getting in another. Um, I feel like when you guys, whether it's a foursome, sixsome, eightsome, whatever, if you're all walking for at least the first 150 yards, you're all shooting the shit because – it's just you're all right neck and neck with each other. You're all right beside each other, just hanging out. And you can you can have, have actually more conversations yep. throughout the the course of the round and not hold up play. Because a big factor that I think that holds up play is the conversations between your partners on the tee box and on the green. Not whether you're waiting or not half the time. Like, because there's times I've I've been there and the one guy he's a talker or he's telling a story know he's in the cart or whatnot mm-hmm. and you know we i didn't see him in the, the entire hole we get to the next hole he tells his story i'm being you know respectful to let him tell his story and now the time's going by like oh shoot we we should hit to keep up keep pace of play going you, you know what i mean it's just yeah it's wild no, it's, it's fun man i um i'm excited to see more people turning into walkers um it's awesome to see the effect that you know our listeners are um kind of getting out there and doing already um it's been fun so i want to thank all of our listeners that have you know kind of hopped on the mentality already it means a lot um we love doing what we do and talking so much golf with you guys and just um kind of putting this mentality out to the world. I think it's something, you know, we're obviously all passionate about. And it's something that at the end of the day, we just love doing and we're having a lot of fun with. Um, so, you know, I, I think being a, um, being a media source, we've been able to have more impact than we've already thought possible. So um, shout out to you guys. We're, um, we're in the process. We're going to, uh, we have already posted. So this is going out Tuesday. Uh, we've already posted a 1K giveaway. Uh, please go sign up for that. Tag two people. Make sure they're following. Um, we're going to give a huge kind of uh, collaboration giveaway with Cut Golf, Stinger Tees, um, and a couple of our own you know, personalized merchandise items to, uh, to give out to you guys to celebrate making it to 1K. Um, and hopefully, you know, jumping into our next 5K giveaway here soon. So uh, I think uh, already it's been leaps and bounds above the rest. And we're excited to, uh, we're excited to get that out to you guys. What's going on, guys? I hope you're enjoying this interview. Our friends over at Slopegrade have the best and most innovative green reading technology on the market right now, available to you at a discounted price. Only Enjoy the Walk is going to be able to give you. Go to www.slopegrade.com. That's S-L-O-P-E-G-R-A-I-D-E.com and enter Enjoy the Walk at checkout for 10% off. Guys, this software is seriously changing the way we look and read greens. All you need is an iOS software and a belt buckle to tuck it onto. So guys, check them out. They are changing the way we read greens and will help all of your misses and definitely gain you strokes out there on the golf course. 
We also want to thank our sponsor, Saltwater Swag. She is the woman behind all of this awesome merch we've been able to do so far with Enjoy the Walk. Anything you see on our website goes through Saltwater Swag. That's at saltwater underscore swag underscore MD on Instagram. You can hook her up hook up with her on there. You can reach out to her via Facebook at Saltwater Swag MD. Guys, she does vinyl custom decals. She does sweatshirts, sweaters, polos, you name it. If you want something done custom in the world of swag, get it done at Saltwater Swag MD. Now back to the interview. Get into some golf. (laughs) Speaking of golf media, let's get into Uh. some media news. Um, something that kind of hit our radar uh, early this week. And uh, actually at the end of February, actually last day of February is kind of when it hit the, uh, hit the media side of things. And uh, it's Golf Channel moving their headquarters. Now, they're currently, I'll give you guys a little background. Golf Channel headquarters is currently based out of Orlando, Florida. Um, they've been there since they launched, um, I believe, uh, if, let me get these numbers right here. All right, yeah. So Golf Channel launched in January 17th, 1995. Since then, they've been in Orlando, Florida. Um, as we all know, kind of uh, Arnold Palmer's little brainchild um, that really helped, you know, bring to fruition the uh, the accessibility and the notoriety of golf on TV with, you know, through the Golf Channel. Um, they most recently celebrated their 25th anniversary. Uh, this year, actually. So um, they're still kind of celebrating that all year long. Um, but they're, they're moving their headquarters to Connecticut. Um, now, NBC is based out of Connecticut. You know, um, something that I think from, from the way it sounded when this first released, everyone within the Golf Channel wasn't really shocked. They said, you know, hey, we kind of knew this was happening. Um, there's been rumors. Yes, um, you know, we've obviously been kind of on the fence of when we were going to move. It's, you know, just, it was a matter of time. Um, I'm shocked. I don't understand how you can move uh, headquarters of a game. That's a, like a warm weather game to Connecticut of all places. You know, you go from being able to play golf year round to playing golf, maybe five months out of the year guaranteed. I feel like it's just a shock to me that a golf media would want to move to a a cold weather climate. Yeah. I mean, I get it. You want to centralize your headquarters, but at the same time, how many Stanford, Connecticut golf tournaments that the golf channel covered and NBC covered, uh, or covered, uh, in Connecticut zero from, from my understanding. Well, and here's the thing I don't understand too. And it's just kind of like, it took me a minute to process this when I first read it. Um, Stanford, Connecticut. I mean, that's not on anybody's short list of golf destinations. Um, It's not on anybody's short list of, hey, that's that's where a great PGA Tour, you know, championship is held or an event is held. Like there's nothing good about Stanford, Connecticut when you think golf. So why would you move the staple of golf media, golf coverage, golf, the voice of golf pretty much on TV? Why would you move that out of the epicenter of golf in the United States? I mean, Orlando is probably the number one destination for golf in the United States. And right outside of Orlando, you have the number one professional destination for golf, Jupiter, Florida. You have all the, all the pros moving in and around that area. You know, I mean, you're just in, you're in a golf mecca. You're in a golf heaven. Why wouldn't you want to be, continue to be the epicenter of the golf world? Why would you pull out of that? I'm just, I, I'm, I'm completely shocked. And I, I want your opinion, Dante, on, on what do you think? Do you think this opens up the market opportunity for people to jump in and say, hey, if you're going to leave the market at a time when golf's at its best, if you're just going to leave that market wide open, we're going to swoop in and take it. I, I, I think that's where it's lying right now is the opportunity for some other big network to say, well, if you're not going to be in Orlando, we sure as hell are. And I don't know if it's Fox. I don't know if it's, you know, I don't know if it's Disney maybe that takes over it and does something else with them, but Disney and plus someone's got to, someone's got to jump on it. 
Because that's an unbelievable opportunity, <laughs> if you ask me. I, I, I'm uh, not disagreeing you, uh, disagreeing with you at all. I do agree. It is confusing as to why they would leave. I mean, like you said, it's a hotbed area for golf. I mean, all the pros go there for training. I mean, the weather is pretty much perfect year round, golf, golf wise. Uh, I, I mean, it, and we talked about this before how, you know, the golf media and golf coverage is, is kind of falling behind. It doesn't seem like it wants to get with the times. So I do think that we need some other person, like, you know, the kind of knock on the doors of the big fish or whatever, however you want to say it, you know, kind of David versus Goliath thing or whoever wants to take, take it over. I do think there needs to be someone else pushing, pushing the media and the market uh, on golf. It's just, it's, it's, they're just doing so many things media wise. It's frustrating for the average golf consumer. Because that, I mean, at the end of the day, the ones watching golf are those who are golf fanatics, are those who love the game. The only ones that tune in otherwise that just, or whatever, are just usually for the majors and especially the masters. I mean, I, I have friends that, you know, they golf here and there with their buddies, but not, I mean, they, they like other stuff and they're not talking golf like you and I are. So I, I mean, and here's the other thing too, when you, when you start this is from my perspective. When you start bringing guys in like Matt Janella, like, you know, Holly Sanders, like people who want to cover golf that much, what are you going to tell them that, oh, yeah, instead of being in Orlando now where it's always warm weather and we could always send you guys like right next door to go play golf with the best golf names, like we're going to pay for you to get on a flight from Connecticut because it's four feet of snow and now you're going to go play golf somewhere else outside of the office, five-hour drive. Like, it just seems so logistically stupid to move the headquarters out of Orlando, Florida. Yeah, because I was just going to say – It does not make sense to me one bit. I was just going to say that because the cost, uh, logistics, the cost of logistics to move all that equipment and move the, the personnel to go to how many, how many PGA tour – just PGA alone – how many PJ events are in Florida? So you have to cover all of those throughout the, you know, throughout the calendar year of golf. So you look at all those type of PG events, that's, that's dollar signs right there of you moving your, your equipment uh, and your personnel back and forth just yeah. to cover it. I mean, so you bring up a great point and I've got 2020 schedule up right now. So I want to, I want to run over quick, you know, the Florida golf tournaments you got the arnold palmer invitational you got the, the honda classic like we just had you got the players there's three valspar four um and then right up from there masters tournament augusta georgia uh rbc heritage south carolina there's six uh quail hollow north carolina there's seven kind of within driving distance of florida i mean and then they take a little bit of a, a california and a trip but then you got texas that's in uh you know, there's a huge, there's one, two, three, four in Texas. Um, you got one course in Connecticut, the Travelers. It's the only course that gets remotely close. And then you got TPC Boston at the end of the year with the Northern Trust that's uh, back in Massachusetts. So you have two courses in a list of 40. I'm looking at 40 plus that are north of the Carolinas. I mean... It just it, it blows my mind that you take the headquarters, and I know I'm going to say this like probably 30 times because I just can't wrap my head around it. You take the headquarters of a warm weather sport that's the pros are moving to you. You're literally, if you stay where you're at right now in the next 20 years, you might have over 100 pros living within a 10-mile radius of you, and you pick up and move. And they catch it like a quick story. I'd say maybe a Wednesday afternoon, something where that happened. You can walk right out of here, out of your office, and drive right over hey, to it to see what's no going sh on. No shame now, with the boss man. We love the boss man. But if they have, <laughs> if they have that Jupiter, Florida thing happen with Tiger Woods, where he runs into the fire hydrant, there's no, there's no boots on the ground unless, yet again, logistically stupid. 
to, they have boots on the ground in Orlando all the time away from their headquarter office, which is just like, you should have stayed in the first place then. But it, it blows my mind to, to see them moving. And I understand, yes, NBC Sports has been out of Connecticut since 2013. Um, but I just feel like and, – and here's the other thing too. And I'm a huge Arnold Palmer guy, so maybe this is a skewed perspective. But you, you announced this information two weeks before the Arnold Palmer Invitational. The company that Arnold Palmer built, he built it in Orlando. He wanted it to be in Orlando. You announced this information two weeks before the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Seems like a little F you just right at Arnold Palmer and the whole Arnold Palmer Foundation. It either says we don't believe in the game of golf, we don't believe in what we have in Orlando. I don't know, but it just uh, – it almost infuriates me that this is the move they felt was best coordinated for Golf Channel. And I feel like Golf Channel might not have had a say in it. This is the only devil's advocate I'm going to play. That Golf Channel might not have had a say in it. That NBC said, listen, you either stay with NBC and move or you do your own thing. And NBC has the rights to everything PGA Tour other than CBS. So I feel like Golf Channel was put on a very short option list. Of kind of like a forced retirement esque. 100%. Where. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I said it before. I said it in a tweet too. I said they need the golf channel needs there needs to be a new golf channel. Someone needs to come in there and and just take over and focus solely on golf. Uh there's just there's other avenues I think out mm-hmm. there that can be done. And uh, it's just these big these big corporations they're just According to them, so NBC Sports, ESPN, and all them, golf's nothing. You know, they don't care. Golf brings no rating. So, like to their overall business, so they they'll do whatever they'll do whatever for the four main sports. But yeah, you just gotta there's there's gotta there's an opening out there to where you just gotta move you just gotta move golf to its own thing and and push it in a new way. And I hope someone does it. <laughs> I would love for someone to do it. Um, You know, the guys from No Laying Up podcast broke this news. Um, They're, I I don't know them personally, but they're in the kind of scene of PGA Tour media. Um, I'd love to see guys like them, uh, Scratch Golf, Eric Anders Lang. I'd love to see guys like that. Um, You know, shout out to them. Uh, Bring us along if you're going to do what what I'm about to say. But uh, I would love to see guys like that branch off and say, listen, we're the people's media now. Like we're, we're going to do media. Um, I'd love to see them, you know, partner up the PGA tour and say, listen, we're going to be the representative of media. And from now on, like people already follow us on Twitter, people follow no lane up and those guys way more than they do golf channel when they're looking for golf news, you know, like no lane up broke the news before golf channel broke the news about them moving. You know what I'm saying? Like it, we're getting to a point and you see it. And way people more are questioning that. it too. Yeah, it, it, you see it in way more than golf. You see it in every sport. You see it in basketball. A lot of their news gets broken via Twitter. Um, shit, our president breaks shit via Twitter now. Like, you're not, <laughs> you're not finding your latest news on Fox, NBC, you know, CNN. You're not finding your latest news on that. You're finding it via Twitter. You're finding it via Instagram. As sad as it is, Facebook posts. That, that's where your latest news is coming from. Um, and I think Golf Channel moving its headquarters is a signaling of a major opportunity, not only in the game of golf, but just in all like aspects of media that the, the little guys are going to start making some noise <laughs> as far as Twitter notifications, you know, breaking news. You have it. I think, uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see because it just, I feel like it just opens up the floodgates for people to come in and cover it the way it should be because it almost feels like golf channel is just giving up on like the whole golf scene. Uh, I agree. And and we discussed this before Uh, the way golf in, in our opinion, and even in my opinion, the way golf media is coveraging 
the sport of golf has been so stagnant over the years that I feel it's more, it's definitely on a decline and there's new avenues and there's new technologies to, to provide the content uh, for golf and golf media and the pros. And, you know, obviously you got the Instagram stories, you got Twitter, you got YouTube, you got all types of stuff that you can, you can promote golf and push content. And that's the direction we need to go. It's just, uh, you know, we just need, we just need a, a, a governing body to basically, say hey we're we're stepping in we're doing this and here's the cool thing too man and and we've dabbled in it a little bit just in like starting this podcast the availability for i wouldn't say cheap but the availability for reasonably priced like 4k streaming uh cameras like that can go live so like if i wanted to go and film a golf tournament live i could produce it and put it on my youtube live and people could go check it out without having to subscribe to PGA Tour Live, to Golf Channel Network, you know, pay the extra price on their TV package to, to make sure they have Golf Channel. Like, now I'm saying, I'm not saying the governing bodies like the PGA Tour are just going to let this happen because they have complete reign over everything that's produced inside the ropes. Um, and we've talked about this before, but like they censor everything that's put out golf media wise and if it's not coming from their outlets right now they don't let it come out um but there's so much technology out there that why in the hell we can't see every single shot from every single golf tournament blows my mind because the accessibility is there i mean a a perfect example is the masters i watch the masters tournament more on their website and their app than i do on tv and and the masters is like get more golf out of it and the masters is a completely separate entity they run their own show cbs doesn't own them nbc doesn't own them they tell the directors of those tournaments like of those companies what to do when they come on site and that's the best part and that the masters like i i love that you said that the masters does it so well they have amen corner live they have the front nine live they have featured groups live they have you know 16 17 18 live and it's like you could just tune in they have every part of the golf course covered and you see almost every shot thursday through sunday and it's great you just go on your tablet or your phone and you just you just hit that little if you got a smart tv you just hit that cast button boom right on the 55 inch every now 70 inch boom perfect and and that's it's and that's just utilizing and coming to terms with how the, the technology is moving. I mean, you think I'm going to turn on my cable television and watch the masters this year? Probably not. I'm going to go watch Amen corner of the feature groups. Yeah. That's just. It's, now it'll yeah. be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how the, um, how the media maybe shifts. Um, I, I think there's going to be a change. Uh, I don't know how it's going to like, you know, trickle down, but I think there almost has to be a change in the way they cover golf. Um, it's just not going to be the same from Sanford, Connecticut, as it was down in Orlando, Florida. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they're integrated with the PGA show, uh, how they do all that. I mean, they were literally, you're, you, they were bringing media through tours of the golf channel. You know, when we were down there, they were offering tours of the golf channel and having kind of hangouts right down there at, uh, golf channel headquarters. Cause they were integrated seamlessly with the PGA show. Um, and where's just, they, uh, aren't they at because i know they do the demo day show and it's at orange county national mm-hmm. aren't they like across this or were across the street or something they're right there I, yeah, i'm pretty are. sure the actual studio is literally next door so you can just hop back and forth well and and so what they're saying no is more. it's not going to be like a direct pull out like they're they're slowly pulling folks out during 2020 and expect to be moved into Stanford, Connecticut by like end of season 2020. So they'll, they're slowly working it in, but it just, dude, it blows my mind, man. I Orlando anywhere in Florida for that matter, but just Orlando in general is, is this the center for the hotbed of golf. And if anything sensible, like for them to move, I thought it might've been to Texas where the PGA is taking their, you know, talents you per se they're taking their headquarters the pga out to texas um or even the carolinas charlotte area huge hot bed of golf there 
Um, it, it just blows my mind that the headquarters of golf is now going to a cold weather state that just, man, it just, it, it's almost unforeseeable. When, when you, when you thought for the next like 30 years of golf, especially with them golf channel, making such a big deal out of them being the 25 years celebrating their 25 years where you thought the next 25 years of the golf channel was going to take them Stanford, Connecticut wouldn't have made your top 100. No. There's no way, no how. So I mean, think about think about all one thing here. Think about all the people that talk about you know in, in the industry that are in our area. You know, from club pros to cart barn guys to caddies, anybody in the industry that's in this northeast area. You know, they they work over the summer, or even as, aspiring pros. Uh, you know, those who are like, you know what, I'm gonna take my game and I'm going to you know I'm gonna try and make it on the PGA tour and 99.9% of the guys say I'm going to Florida once the weather gets cold because whatever job they're in when that, when it did, when it's off season here, they're on, they're on the way to Florida. They do their thing in Florida and then they come back in the summertime when the weather is nice. Take it for a perfect example. Every person that I grew up with in like the central Southern PA area, that ever said, I want a career in golf, the first place they moved, Orlando, Florida, or somewhere around there, Georgia, little bit, you know, Southern uh, South Carolina, Myrtle Beach area, Connecticut. Are you kidding me? <laughs> anyway, that's all I got for that topic. Um, it'll be interesting to see where that, where that goes from here on out. Um, but speaking of the Arnold Palmer Invitational, uh, I want to get into that a little bit because I just love, love, love this event. Um, I love everything about it from how much, you know, uh, nods to the King that we give throughout the whole week, the ceremonies, um, that they do the way that the players, they dress up like, you know, vintage Arnold Palmer with a new style, a new flair, all the umbrella logos going around, whether it's on shoes, on hats, on bags. Um, let's get into the Arnold Palmer a little bit. Um, you know, quick story. Everyone probably knows by now. Tiger pulled out. He's not playing. Um, I'm starting to get concerned. I don't like that he's not playing two weeks in a row, especially at the Arnold Palmer. Something. In and they his, say his, in his agent backyard. His, they say his agent said uh, his back still stiff quote unquote stiff. yeah back and so. stiff doesn't doesn't make me feel too uh too happy about his prospects for the for the masters or moving forward for yeah. that matter no and i know on his mind that's all he really cares about at this point is 83 and then just masters jackets at this point but uh, for for me you can't just expect to not play in any tournaments in the upcoming you know, before the Masters and just like come out, play the Masters and expect to win and just take the rest of the year off or just play the majors and then try and do it again. I mean, you need to get out there with those guys because those guys are grinding. And, and we've discussed before, that field is so big that anybody can win now. I mean, that's how talented these guys are. I mean, Oh, and at, here's the thing I don't get as well. Tiger talks about, you know, getting prepped for the Masters, getting ready for the Masters. Every year he talks about, getting enough play time in, in the spring. So like getting his, uh, getting his reps in, getting his tournament schedule, prepping himself for the masters. He's the biggest advocate of that. So for him to skip out on the Honda, okay, cool, whatever. He did that last year. No big deal. But for him to miss Arnie's tournament, something's up, man. Something is up with the big cat. I don't know what, I don't want there to be anything serious, but something's up. It's that's uh, it's very questionable, but, and not obvious. Every, mm. Everybody thinks it could be the worst thing, but who knows? Maybe he saying, just comes out there and just sneaks one out and just like dominates or we, something. We do have to remember. Remember now, Tiger's not twenty four years old anymore. He's forty four years old. He's getting old. He played a lot of golf with the President's Cup, the World Golf Championships. You know, over in Dubai, he he's done a lot of travel. The old man's put some miles on the back here the last couple months. So couldn't be the worst thing in the world. 
Um, but, you know, other guys that are headlined in the field that I think are just going to make this tournament must watch. Um, Roy McIlroy, Brooks Kepka, Adam Scott, Patrick Reed. Um, Brooks kepka has got some stuff to prove here, I think, because he's kind of – he's not played the best golf here in the last – month or two he's lost his number one spot hasn't really contended uh in any tournament that he's played in while uh meanwhile you know you got rory mcelroy knocking down the door at every tournament he plays in he's top five to every tournament this year so far adam scott's I mean, won this year patrick reed's won this year i mean shoot patrick reed everybody hates him but he's he's out there killing it <laughs> so yeah there's a there's a lot of talent out there it's going to be fun, man. I, I love Bay Hill, too. Bay Hill is just a world-class golf course. Um, I've never gotten to play it myself, but uh, it's always fun to watch on TV. This place is always um, just top-notch, you know, tee to green. And that, and that, that course in that, uh, that tournament, you know, it's, the, it's kind of like a memorial, obviously, to recognize, you know, Arnold Palmer and then – it's to me. It's also kind of uh, almost the feel as a as an alumni uh, reunion esque <laughs> in a way. It brings that feel to me. Mm-hmm. Same with you bring you bringing the community together. It's the same thing at the PGA show. It's it's that one weekend where you know you just get everybody down together just to have one celebratory type of event, and 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 that's what that's what I get out of the honor uh, out of the tournament at bay hill oh uh, for arnie's tournament i get i that's one of the and then you know they're all repping they're all repping the merch they're all repping the umbrella on the hats the shoes like you said earlier that's what i get out of it so that's that's what makes uh it really excited for me to watch that yeah now to kind of just rattle off some other guys that are just you know notable so let's not forget about some of the other heavy hitters because this tournament always brings out the heavy hitters um it brought i feel like the top 50 in the world are always chomping at the bit for this event. Jason Day will be there, previous winner. Uh, Phil Mickelson, uh, Francesco Molinari will be there. Uh, Patrick Reed, we said. Danny Willett, Ricky Fowler, Siwoo Kim. Uh, Sun J.M., who just won this past week. He'll be in the Saw field. that. 21-year-old, man. Rookie of the year last year at 20. Knocking down his first win already at 21. He could be a force for a long time on the tour. I'm excited to see his upside, man. He's got, he just is a heavy hitter. He hits the ball long ways, puts the lights out of the ball. Um, stoked to see him tee it up again at the Arnold Palmer. Is Fleetwood playing? Mr. Fleetwood. Yes. Yes, he is. All right. As well as, well got, as other he's guys. Got some, uh, he's got some revenge to. He's got to shake off some of the uh, disappointment that. off that last round, man. Whew. That was tough to watch. But uh, um, other yeah. guys on the Ryder Cup team, Terrell Hatton, Alex Noren, Ian Poulter will be there, Abraham Answer. So it's going to be a star-studded field. I'm really looking forward to watching it. Um, it'll see who gets hot and, you know, goes into the players with a head of steam. I always feel like uh, guys who play well at the Arnold Palmer, if, they, if they're hanging around the top 20, they're usually a good bet going into the players because you got to be a good ball striker to, to score well around TPC Sawgrass. Um, I think Rory T five his last event uh, going into his win at the players last year. So it's always fun to watch because I love teeing up. Uh, I love teeing up some bets going into the players week, you know, seeing who plays well at the Arnold Palmer and the, and the Honda classic. Cause they're always star studded fields. So that'd be fun to watch, man. I, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, hopefully they send some of that warm weather up here that we've been, uh, you know, oh, so lacking uh, up on the. Meet- I think I think we're getting. It. I know this week and next week are looking pretty good. So let's just yeah. hopefully it stays on that. Uh, stays on that level. I'm pumped, man. So yeah, guys, uh, appreciate y'all listening. Uh, stay tuned for our next episode where uh, we'll have S. Dot Putters. We'll have the the man, the myth, the legend, Steve, who is behind the putter restoration page on Instagram. Uh, he's worked on a few of our uh, cruise putters, Dante and Isaiah. So uh, we'll get him in the on the podcast and listen to him kind of tell us the magic behind what goes into making these restorations and uh, seeing where he gets some of his inspiration and how he kind of ties it all together to make one of a kind pieces of art with these putters. So uh, that's it for us this week on uh, this beautiful Tuesday. Thanks again for listening guys. As always, you can find us at enjoy the walk pod on Instagram and Twitter. I uh, want to shout out our sponsors, uh, Saltwater Swag. Thank them for uh, getting us hooked up with all the latest merch that we put out. 
um, and to slope grade. So if you guys haven't checked out slope grade first, check out our, uh, our episode with them, with Jeff Mosini, uh, the creator and founder of slope grade. Um, he's been gracious enough to be kind of our founding sponsor on this, on this podcast. So shout out to him, go check him out at www.slopegrade.com. That's S L O P E G R A I D E.com. Um, he's put out a one of a kind green rating software links up right to your phone or your smartwatch, uh, makes green reading just an absolute breeze during any of your practice rounds. Um, and yeah, go check it out guys. And I guarantee you'll be really intrigued and will most likely want to pick up his product. If you do want to pick it up, use coupon code, enjoy the walk at checkout to get 15% off. Um, so that's pretty much it from us guys. Check out our latest merch, uh, leading up to the players. We've released our, the walkers quicker than most tees as well as some of our shield tees and, uh, a really cool, uh, walk inspired t-shirt from the, uh, from the dare do not do drugs logo uh, that we're releasing <laughs> with this pod. So check it out, guys. We love to have fun with the game and enjoy the walk. So that's www.enjoythewalk.store. Thanks so much for listening. We really appreciate it, guys. Also, we said it earlier in the podcast, but please, please, please go tag your friends. Hopefully you can win our 1K giveaway. Uh, we love each and every one of you who have made it this far with us. Let's keep on building. Keep on carrying your clubs. And as always, enjoy the walk. Enjoy the walk. One shot at a time.